G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today we've reached part five of my Rhino Inside series. And today we're looking at creating Revit levels uh, using Grasshopper. So um, if you're not familiar with Rhino Inside, I suggest you watch some earlier parts of this series um, or check out their website. Um, but essentially it's a, uh, a tool that allows Rhino in particular to run Grasshopper in Revit. Um, so quite exciting and an interesting alternative to Dynamo. So if you're just getting started, definitely have a watch of at least part one, where I sort of touch on the basics of the program and show how you can get Revit geometry into Rhino. Uh, but today we're going to specifically deal with creating Revit levels. So in the last part, we actually spent quite a while looking at how to create a set of grids. Um, so now we're going to look at how to create a set of levels so that you can establish basically a scripted workflow um, where you can set up grids, levels, and then bring massing in, which we'll look at doing in future parts. So we'll have a look at creating Revit floors from massing in Rhino into Revit and also how to create Revit families and place them um, in the part after that. But today we're going to be focusing on this, the following scenario. So we have a ground level in Revit that sits at a particular height and above that we have a podium level um, which sits at a nominated distance from ground floor and then typical floors from there. Um, so the user will specify how many they want at what offset. So in this video we're going to get the parameter of the ground level elevation and from there, we're going to create level data. So we're going to create names for the levels and also elevations based on that ground plane. And then we're going to create levels using the types, names, and heights that we uh, set up in Grasshopper. So I'll be using Rhino Work in Progress or Rhino Whip um, and also Revit 2019.2 for anyone following along. Uh, but let's get started. So it should be a pretty quick tutorial today, just a nice little workflow that I've sort of uh, cooked up. Um, so we're going to start off by creating our level data. So the first thing we'll do is actually get the parameter of our ground floor. So we'll just go to the Revit tab um, in Rhino Inside. So I've already booted up Rhino Inside and opened up Grasshopper. Um, but we'll go to Element and we need to get the parameter of the ground level. So we're going to get a level picker under Input. And I'll just go to a drop down list so you can pick a level out of those. Ideally, your model will just have a ground level at this point. So we'll get our ground level and we're going to get the parameter key called Elevation. If you ever need to see the um, parameters that are available in an element, just get the element parameters node. And essentially that will give you a big list of data that's available. Interesting. Ah, I need to go to the element, sorry. I was just putting the parameter in there. Cool. And then you should have a big list of all the names of the parameters that you can extract out of this particular element. Um, but we're going to ignore that for now, and we're just going to get the parameter value elevation. And there you go, we can see that we get a number. In this case, we actually get a parameter value, so it's non, not a number yet. If you pass it through a panel, it becomes a number. Um, so you can actually run arithmetic over it now, for example. Um, but you can't actually run arithmetic over it uh, as a parameter value, which is quite interesting. Uh, or at least in my experience, you couldn't. So use a panel to convert it. Uh, what we're going to do to set up now is we're going to set up the height difference of the podium floor and also the height difference of the floor to floor after that. So we're just going to get a number slider um, and we'll just go between uh, 2.7 and we'll set the value by default to 5 meters up to a potential of 8 meters. And that's for our podium. So we'll just right click that and just call that podium height. And then we'll just create another slider uh, between 2400 um, up to uh, 20, uh, we'll go three meters, up to five meters. And this will be our typical floor height. In addition to this, we'll also need to um, nominate the number of floors we want to create after podium. Um, so we'll set that up as well. So we're going to be creating the number that we're going to begin our podium from. So let's say that your podium is technically a level one or it's two. Um, we'll set up a slider. So at the minimum, it will have to be level one because we already have ground floor. Um, let's say up to a potential of three, uh, three. So we'll set ourselves to one, to a potential of three. And we'll just say podium number. And then we'll create another slider. Um, and we'll say this is between uh, two up to, uh, we'll say by default we'll make five levels up to a potential of 15. And we'll say up to level number. So we're going to go from level one up to level five, technically. So what we're going to do now is construct a domain. Because we're going to create a range of numbers um, for our level numbers. So we're going to construct domain. And we're going to go from one to five. 
We're then going to create a range and that's our domain. The number of steps we'll just use a subtraction formula and we'll do our top level down to our podium number. And what we should get is a range of numbers. So we've got one, two, three, four, five at the moment, um, which could change. So what we'll do now is just also round because occasionally a number won't come out as a whole number. It'll come out as one with a decimal, but we can use the nearest function in order to assure it's always an integer um, that comes out with uh, zero decimal places. So what we're going to do now is just concatenate that, that onto a level in order to create the name for our levels. So we're going to get a concatenate function and we're just going to create three variables. The first one is going to be uh, the level. Um, in this case, I will just, I'll probably use a panel actually to set that. And then we'll have a space. So I'll just call that space and I'll set the text as a space and then the number. Um, so we already have our number and we have a space embedded in here and I'll just create a panel with level just in case the user wants to change that to something different. But what this should give us is just a set of names for our levels at this point. So we can just create a, a panel just to store this data and communicate it back to the, to the user. So obviously when we change our values, you'll see that our domain will contract. Um, let's say our podium is level two and we're going up to level eight or we're going up uh, yeah, to level eight. So now you can see we go from level two up to level eight. We'll just stick with level one for podium and we'll just go back to, we'll do six up to level six. So essentially this is how you can derive the name of your levels. What we need to do now is determine the elevations of the level. So you recall that we have the elevation of ground floor. So we can essentially use another range and some addition in order to create the uh, resultant levels that all of these are gonna occur at as an elevation because we need these for our final um, level creation node. So what we'll do now is just create a basic multiplication function. And we're gonna times uh, the difference in levels times the typical floor. Because essentially this is going to be uh, the height of our top level uh, when it's added on um, to our ground floor plus podium height. So we'll create a plus node. So we wanna find out the height, the height of our podium first. So we're gonna go, we're gonna add the podium height onto our ground floor elevation. And there we go. We should have, yeah, 9,400. Um, if we plug in the parameter value instead, it notice that it only gives us 5,000. So it doesn't actually add the number of the parameter value. Um, I believe this is due to the data type that the parameter value exists as, uh, but quite interesting. Not, not what I expected when I first used it. Um, but anyway, uh, I've shown you at least so you're aware. Um, we'll just get another addition node because um, we want to find out the, the level of our highest level. So we need to know our podium floor plus our maximum floor to floor range. So now this should give us our maximum level. And of course, as you can guess, we're going to just use this to construct a simple domain. So we're going to start at our podium level and we're going to finish at the top of our building. So we should be going from 9,400 up to 24,400 at the moment. What we'll do with that is again, just create another range. So in this case, we have our domain and then our steps will be the number of floors. And that's all the way back at our domain back here. Whoops. We should end up with a set of levels. And there you go. So we have our six levels and we have our six names. So we're pretty much almost ready um, at this point to establish, establish our levels. Um, we'll just get another round node. So I'll just get a, a rounding just in case um, there's any sort of anomalies with the units. Occasionally I find that the Revit level can be measured um, very close to, to on the zero, but not quite. So the nearest function enables us to go to the nearest uh, one millimeter in this case. And then we'll just get another panel so we can view the data coming out. And there we go, we can see now we have, now we have five, five levels. And obviously if we change uh, the elevation, um, we can expect to see that change as well. So if I say that my level is 2.7 instead, uh, whoops, there you go. You can see that all of this has also adjusted to suit now. So there we go. Um, at this point, we're gonna create up, uh, set up a stream filter. So you might've seen me use this in the last part. 
Essentially, this just allows us to tell our Revit data not to be written until we say OK. So what I'll do is just search for stream filter. And I highly advise that you use these wherever you're creating elements because it lets you wait. Um, so into stream one, I'm just going to feed in my elevation values. I'm just going to make a button and I'm just going to call this create levels. Cool. And essentially when we press this, um, it will feed through stream one temporarily, but when it's not clicked, um, it'll feed through nothing. So essentially it stops our data from finishing. Um, what we're going to do before we create our levels, and I'll just get the node we're going to use to do that under datum. Uh, we're going to do add level by elevation. You'll see that we need the height, the level type and the name. So we don't have the level type. Um, in order to do that, we're just going to use an element identity node. So under element, element identity, we'll just go back and get the identity of ground level. There we go. And really all we care about here is just the level type that comes out of that. Because that will be the type that we use um, in, in order to, to, uh, to get that level. Um, alternatively, you could also uh, feed in an element type by name node on the category. And that will give you a chance to pick different level head types if you want to use a different level head to what ground floor is. Um, so feel free to use that one instead if you want that ability. In fact, it's probably better, uh, more flexibility. So we'll connect that into our type. Into our name, we'll feed in our level names. And then we'll feed in our stream filter into the elevation. So by default, it won't run until I press the button. So I'll just save this. And essentially all we need to do is just, um, just zoom out and a level should be created. So when I run this and press my stream filter, there you go. You can see our levels have now been created. So we have our podium floor plus five meters and then our typical levels beyond that. I haven't actually tried to see what happens if you redefine all the properties and run it again. Sometimes some scripts in Grasshopper for Rhino inside uh, regenerate all the elements, which is great. I'm not sure if that's what's gonna happen here, but I'll try it anyway. Let's make some more levels, increase our typical floor height, reduce our podium height, and try again. See what happens. Oh, there you go. It regenerates and it builds the levels again. So that's pretty cool. Um, so quite flexible, actually. You can really experiment with levels. Um, you might be able to use them to drive masses, uh, to get mass floors out of a mass. So there's some interesting workflow potential um, that this script can give you. Because um, Grasshopper is obviously really flexible and quick uh, to create new sets of levels. Um, I found Dynamo is a little bit slower. So I do quite like this workflow. So hopefully that helps you um, work with levels in Rhino inside. Um, so that's all for this video, um, but we'll look in the next part at creating Revit floors using a Rhino mass and these levels that we've just created. Um, so it should be quite an interesting workflow and you'll st probably start to see some more functional workflows emerging in what I show you in the next few parts. Um, so hopefully that helps. Um, so that's all for today. Um, if you've got any comments or feedback, feel free to leave it down below. And if you've got any requested topics to see if I can do something with Rhino Inside for you, um, let me know as well, because there's a lot of potential this tool has, and um, I'm sure I won't cover literally everything it can do, uh, but happy to hear what you want to see. Um, so if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. I make videos about two to three times a week, and we'll continue to do so for a long time. Um, so hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.